seven. So I need a couple of uh, ushers. Brother Josh is in the band. I need a couple of uh, ushers. All right, brother buddy. Here comes Samuel. This is, they tell me, the resurrected, amazing Bonnie band. It looks good already, so we might. Can we sing along if we know it? All right. All right. Y'all tell, tell me when you're close to ready. We've got a, you can't see everybody. We've got a uh, washboard back here. we got a, is this a dobro? Field dobro. Got a guitar, a couple more guitars. we got the wash tub. I'm interested to see how that works out. 
piano, the organ, and the keyboard. Everything. Everything but brass, I guess. Do you want them to wait until you come back? Just take it quick. Now, after uh, after they play the all, after y'all play the first song for the offering, you got two songs. Is that right? All right. Then you just play the. You go ahead and play the next one. All right. Uh, Samuel, could you pray for the offering for us? Hold on. Oh. All right. How about uh, Brother Joey? Could you pray?
power in the blood. It is 130 in your red book. There's power in the blood. John chapter 3. Thank you all. Good job. Quite a following. I didn't know where to sit down because every, everywhere I looked there was cameras out. And I was going to be blocking somebody's view. So maybe you all ought to keep it going. Every service. Now... The Bonnie Band. Who came up with that name? Miss Bonnie, was that you? Oh. I like it. I like it. John chapter 3. Some of y'all quoted a lot of these verses in your scripture this morning. It goes perfect with the message. We'll start in verse number 1. Verse number 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, this is not the question that Nicodemus asked, but the response that Jesus gives him is this. You must be born again. He's going to spend the next several verses telling him exactly what that means to be born again. Verse number four. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. He repeated himself 
both of the times as he responded the wind bloweth where it listeth thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is every one that is born of the spirit Nicodemus answered and said unto him how can these things be Jesus answered and said unto him art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things verily verily I say unto thee we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not how she how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven he said this you must be born again to go into the kingdom of God to go into the kingdom of heaven you must be born again you're born all of us were born to go to heaven we have to be born again Nicodemus says can a man when he's old enter again into his mother's womb and Jesus says well we're not talking about the flesh we're talking about the spirit man is born of the flesh that's born but then he's born again of the spirit he must be born of water and then born of the spirit we were all born probably most of us unless something real tragic happened almost the same way we all come inside of a a fluid filled sack ambiotic fluid usually when it's time mama says my water broke here comes the baby born of water this is what Jesus is talking about and then he says after that be born again you're born once then you're born again then he tells him you have to be born of the flesh but that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit our flesh will die after our flesh dies our soul will live on to be born again your spirit to be born again is the way that we enter into heaven how do we do that Nicodemus is a man that knows religion he's a Pharisee he's a religious man he's a Jewish man he believes in God and yet he does not know how to be born again how to be saved these are words that we use all the time what do they what do they mean and Jesus tells him this if you can't understand earthly things how can you understand when I tell you about heavenly things the wind blows and you don't know where it came from you don't know where it's going but you know that it exists because you see what it has done we don't we can't see where God came from we can't see where he will be but we know that he exists because we can see what he has done and then he says the son of man came down from heaven even the same that was in heaven he's talking about himself now here we go into verse number 14 where some of y'all quoted this morning and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life way back in the book of Exodus the children of Israel left Egypt several of them they were they were disobedient they were complainers they griped all the time and there were snakes fiery serpents the Bible says they came and they people got bit by these snakes we don't like snakes hopefully most of you don't like snakes there, there's really there's two kind of snakes there's the there's the snake that will bite you to death and then there's the snake that will try to choke you to death snakes aren't friendly snakes are evil snakes are cursed also by the way they're bit by these fiery snakes they start dying people start dying 
They ask Moses, pray for us, help us. Moses intercedes. Moses talks to God. And God says, build a snake on a pole of brass and hang it high where the people can see it. And if the people look at that snake on that pole, then they will live. That was a picture of Jesus Christ that was to come. Those that believe, all they have to do is, is look. But you know what? There were people that said, that's silly. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. And you know what happened to them? They died from their snake bite. Now, you might know this. I don't know if you ever pay attention. And I, I haven't seen it in a while. But hospitals or IMSA or people that help people that are sick, they still use in their symbols a snake on a pole Jesus said those that those that look just as they looked at that snake and lived even so must the son of man be lifted up verse number 15 he said that that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life whosoever believes in the son of man will have eternal life but then he's going to repeat it. The most known scripture all over the world, probably for all of time, is this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said the same thing, but he said it just a little bit different with more emphasis. For God, God so loved the world he's not saying that that God loves good people he said that God loves the world he so loved it that he was willing to give his only begotten son Jesus would come to be born as a man to live a sinless life and then to die for the sins of all of the world for all of time. God so loved the murderer. God so loved the thief. God loves the adulterer, the liar. God loves the, the drug addict, the drunk. God loves anything that you can think of. Any person that you could think of, God loved them so much that he gave his only son. By design, from the beginning, Jesus would come and be born, and he would die a cruel death to pay for our sins. That's how much God loved the world. Some people say, how could God be, how could, how could this God be a God of love? And then people, he allow people to go to hell. But God is not willing that any should perish. He gave us the way out. Jesus will further explain that in the next, the next segment of verses. But God loved us enough that he paid our way. We owed a debt, our sin, our sin debt. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. No one is righteous. No, not one. The penalty for our sin is death and hell. In the beginning, when God created Adam, he said, Don't eat of this tree. In the day that you eat, you shall surely die. Death began because Adam disobeyed. As by one man sin entered into the world, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, he tells us. We all have a sin nature. We all do what's wrong naturally. I can remember back, I can remember being um, before I was two. I don't remember every day. Some, when I say that, sometimes people think I remember. But I remember things before I was two. I remember being a baby that's weird. Some people can't remember before they were 10. Whichever. Uh, I remember, well, I remember my first day 
when I, when I uh, left the nursery of my church, um, I would have just turned two. I remember that day vividly, all of the details of that day. I don't remember every day of two. But I also remember when my brother was born. I was two when, when he was born, where I was at, what I was doing. And I remember when we were really young, uh, before I knew a whole lot, um, I may, maybe I was four. So I was a pretty good kid at four, right? Y'all believe that. I was a real good kid at four. Didn't know a whole lot, so uh, my favorite my favorite story that I like to tell, and, and we nobody knew this for a long time. I, I saved it until I was probably 35 to tell what had happened. But my brother was was uh, two years was two years between us, so he was young, but he was walking. He could do things. So we had at our, at our house in the kitchen, you could leave the kitchen and you could go into, we had like a utility porch or a laundry room, whatever, then that went into the garage. So that door out of the kitchen into the utility room had a lock on it. And I locked it one day. And my dad had said, I'm getting tired of somebody locking this door. Don't lock this door. Next time I go out the door and somebody locks it, I'm going to come back in and y'all aren't going to like it. I locked the door. I don't, I don't know why. I didn't mean to. I had no intentions of... I was four. And I'm playing four-year-old things that four-year-olds play, and I can hear just... A, just sounds like someone's breaking all of the wood in the house at once. A fo- like a grizzly bear that's coming through the door and I'm like I lock that door so I take off to go in there and my my little brother gets there before me and he unlocks the door and my dad comes in and 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 my dad was um upset and he looked at Glenn's his name he said you locked that door and he went like this And so what happened? Who said poor baby? <laughs> yeah, he it was poor baby. He got whipped for a lock in the door. That was the punishment in our house. Uh, we got spankings quite regularly. At the time, I thought I, I got them too much. Looking back, I deserved more. But he took one for me. And I thought to myself, it's too late for me to say anything. He already took the punishment. Why, why, why should he endured that for me? Why would, I go, why would I go and offer my, but you know what? I lied. I was lying by not saying anything. I chose to lie. I did the wrong thing. I, I never asked him until... Like I was 35. I thought it, enough time has passed. I can safely bring this up. No one's in danger anymore. It'll be funny. He don't remember it. He has no memory of the... But I thank him. Uh, and there were probably other times. But I, but I was four. And I chose, I chose to lie. Now we could justify. You can justify that however you want. But... What's wrong is wrong. It wasn't right. I wasn't being truthful. I wasn't being honest. And I can't think of a person that I know that would have interjected. You would have known my dad at that time. That you would have said, no, wait a second. It was me. It was whip me. No one in their right mind would do that. You would have done the same thing as me. I lied. Even at four. Even younger. I have I had thoughts of things just as we all do. I mean we have to teach you have to teach babies things. Don't bite people. Don't take. That's not yours. Share. Don't hit. Because we we have to learn how how we're supposed to act, but even though we may act better, some of us may act better as we get older, we still have that inside of us that says 
I want that. Why, ain't the, why don't I have that? I deserve that over them. God said, don't, don't envy, don't lust, because your, your envy and your lust, it brings forth sin when it's conceived, and sin brings forth death. We all, we're all guilty. Whether we want to or not, we sin. Whether we like it or not, we deserve hell. But God said, I love the world enough. I love the world so much that I'll give my son, my only begotten son. He'll live a perfect life. He'll come as a man. He'll die as a man. But he'll raise himself from the grave in three days. To pay for our sins we can think that it was easy for him but it wasn't he was a hundred percent man at the same time he was a hundred percent God but he felt he felt all of that they drove nails through his hands through his feet they had beat him they had plucked his beard pulled his hair they had hit him whipped him tore the back tore his flesh he was so so beaten that he was unrecognizable to his family and to his friends even later on they had no idea who he was that wasn't easy for him it was love and he told them he said no man can take my life I, I, I give it willingly I lay it down willingly. I choose to give this. It's a gift. That's what God said here in this verse. He said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Verse number 17 says this, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come to pass judgment on the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. That was his purpose. With that love, I came to save those that I love by dying on the cross to pay for their sins. And in the verses that they they repeated or they quoted after that he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God take that back to verse number 17 God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world because the world was already condemned those that chose not to believe those that chose just like the snake that was lifted up those that chose not to believe in him were condemned already but those that did believe they were not condemned that's the only way verse number 19 this is the condemnation that light is come into the world the light was Jesus Christ John 1 tells us that light was come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. The things, the sins that we have, we choose to stay in darkness because if we come to the light, if we come to Jesus, our sins are made known. But that's where we confess our sins. Romans chapter 10 tells us, to confess with our mouth believe in our heart accept the Lord Jesus Romans 10 13 says for whosoever that means anybody whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved simple salvation simple being born again he's telling Nicodemus this the way to be born again, Nicodemus, or sinner, is this. 
You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You believe that you're a sinner and there's nothing that you can do to save yourself. Then you pray and you ask for his forgiveness. You accept him as your Savior. You accept the only way, accept him as the only way to heaven and he'll do it. He'll do it, but you have to you have to take the gift. It's the gift of God. It's what God gave. If somebody gives you something, if I had if I had a hundred dollars up here and I said all you gotta do is take it, but you refuse to take it, then you rejected it. You said, Nah, no thanks, I'll get I'll get a hundred bucks a different way. It's a gift. Nothing you can do for a gift. You can't earn gifts. If you do, it's not a gift. We don't work for gifts. Jesus is the gift of God given to us. All I can do is accept that gift. I, and I did that when I was eight. When I was eight, I prayed. It's that camp, youth camp in Oklahoma. Prayed. Told told the Lord that I knew I was a sinner I knew what I did was wrong I knew that Jesus was the son of God and he came and died for my sins would he please forgive me come into my heart and save me and he did simple as that we don't have to add you don't add your offerings offerings have nothing to do with our salvation some people believe that they do they don't some people believe that baptism has something to do with salvation. It, it does not. Baptism is important. Baptism is the next step of obedience after salvation. But it has nothing to do with salvation. The thief that died on the cross next to Jesus. What did he say? He said, Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom. Just like what he was talking about here. Jesus was talking about. Except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't get baptized. He didn't live a good life. He didn't talk in tongues. He didn't do any good works for his salvation. All he did was accept Jesus. That's it. There are others. He wasn't baptized. So the most important, you, most, most important decision that you could make today, if you have not made it, is to be born again. You were born once. We'll all die. Had a friend that always said this, and I don't know where he got it, but if you're born once, then you die twice. If you're born twice, then you die once. We'll all die at some point. But do we enter into everlasting life or do we enter into the second death, which is hell? I chose heaven. I would hope that you would choose heaven as well Have you, ne if you've never made that decision. What do we do to be born again? Just like the verses said, believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Simple as that. That's it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you so much for those that are here today. I pray that you would uh, help those that are here that have never accepted you as their Savior that they would come this morning, that they would ask questions, that we could show them from your word how that they could be saved. Pray that if there's any other decision that needs to be made today, Lord, that the, the altars are open, that people would come, that they would make decisions, whatever you would have them to do for you today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.